Magic, baby. Magic. Welcome to Talk Show On The Go. This talk show is on the go, and I was supposed to be going live, but I was looking at something totally different. And right now, you're meeting, if you're coming on for the first time, which you know you're not if you know me, Sunda Kroonquist and New Jersey's bad boy comedy, Mike Marino. Here I am. Mike Marino. I made it over the hill. <laughs> you made it over the hill. Michael, when's the last time I saw you? I don't know. It feels like years. I mean, Michael, what's going on here with comedy? I have to put you down. Mike D. Marino, right? No, Mike, Mike Marino Live. Mike Marino on Live. On Facebook. You got it. My Mike ex. Marino Live on Facebook. And uh, let's hope comedy's going to make a big comeback. I hope uh, it's going and, to. And uh, hopefully uh, it's what a lot of people need, a little joy, a little laughter. And, uh, and Michael, how yeah. are we going to start doing that? Suddenly we're going to be politically incorrect. You know what? They, you know, it was good. <laughs> <laughs> we need some Italians out here, Mike. Wow. <laughs> I mean, I'm just saying. <laughs> <laughs> I got to watch what I say now these days too. I'm a little cautious. You see? But um how has that changed us as performers? It it might might change a lot of different people in a lot of different ways. Some people might be able to change for the better. There could be people who will not know how to change and maybe people won't even change at all or people will change for the worst. I mean, I still have my point of view. I'm going to talk about me, my family and the way <laughs> I view life. And you've lived it and you've done it and you've yeah. seen it. Yeah. And you know, we're not old old. No. But we can get a little crotchety sometimes. Yeah, when you see things But like, see, that's a good topic because now that my life is changing and I am getting into... Uh, Being crotchety a little? Crotchety. <laughs> I, I, could, I could talk about that. And that won't be politically offensive. It shouldn't be unless somebody else knows what I'm going through. I mean, you know. Dude, you ever get cramps in the middle of the night? Cramps in the middle of the night? I, I throw my back out when I sneeze. <laughs> Now, that shouldn't be offensive to anybody unless they sneeze and get their back whacked out. I don't know. I really don't know. Everybody but the questions I ask my doctor these days, are, to me, are a lot funnier than they've ever been. Like? No, what my doctor said to me, he goes, you know, we might, have to, we might do away with co-pays during the COVID. And I'm like, well, that would be really great because I don't really understand the co-pay. How is it a co-pay if you don't put up any money? It never was a co-pay. It was a me-pay. You didn't put anything in. <laughs> Might as well go to Walgreens and bag your own stuff. How's that? Hey, well, you know, now they have self-serve no matter where you go, and they're going to open up a, a, a Walmart. There have no employees. Everything is self-serve. Well, what if you went to go see the doctor that worked in the Walmart? <laughs> All of a sudden, you became a doctor, and you didn't even know you had a degree. I'm going to self-operate myself. But who's going to take care of the copay? Yeah, there you go. There see, you go. We're back with that again. Thanks for giving me a nice call back. You see that? This is what we do. And we do this live so many times, all the time, but the camera's there just to let you know, and it's uploaded later on YouTube and on uh, all social platforms. I had an opportunity to introduce you to someone that I met on the street, and I thought he was from New Jersey. I'm going to tell you about him later, though. You but met him on the street? It's Does anybody meet anybody on the street anymore? Is that like a thing? Do you remember when we were younger and you met half the people you became friends, friends with, with on, on the, the street? street? Because if you were lost and you were in your car... You didn't program anything into your phone. You didn't have a phone. Go to the gas station. And if you were lost, you either went to the gas station or you saw somebody walking down the street. No matter who it was, where you, you walked, care. you said, hey, excuse me, buddy. Do you know which way? Do you know where I am? Yes. And then you had a hope the guy wasn't going to play with you and say, oh, yeah, you're and way off. And you a Patterson. <laughs> yes, you send you to Patterson. <laughs> That's what my uncle used to do to my boyfriends. <laughs> Let me tell you something, man. I've had a lot of gigs at the Brownstone, and I ask everybody, how many miles do I have to drive around Patterson to get to Wayne? <laughs> they're not in Wayne. They lie. <laughs> they're you know they're right on the edge of Patterson. I know it. it. They are Patterson. They only turn Patterson when the housewives go live and go crazy. All of a sudden, it's like, she better watch me. I'm from Patterson. And I'm thinking, you have so much plastic in your face, you can't even throw a punch anymore. Uh, you want anyone who's Patterson? We started doing a comedy tour with Joe Gorga, who's on Jersey right. Housewives. Right. Now, his wife is Melissa. His sister is the crazy one, Teresa, who threw the table Gals, in the right. air. She, he's part of all of that. So he decides he wants to do stand-up comedy. Me and him became friends, so I took him out on the road. We wouldn't do a bunch of shows. You know, he's born and raised and went to high school in Patterson. Yes, with my cousin. Is Karen that right? Gilbert, yes. They're friends. How do you think I get a break? This is a guy who, <laughs> in, in my opinion should be on an interview on a major talk show about his life going to school in Patterson. He's the only white guy in the school. Not then. And he loved it. No, then. Because he shows you all the pictures of him going to school, 
and he showed me a picture of the football team. Oh, that's different. <laughs> the entire football team is black, and he's sitting right there like this. He loved, and they love each other. They but, love each but, other. But Guineas and Blacks and Patterson have always stuck together. Look at you. You just got away with saying Guinea. I could say I'm offended by that word. I know, right? I'm not. I think it's funny. But I didn't know that it was a bad thing. I didn't think it really is. And a is Guido, it? a Guinea. I mean, we can't Guido say Guido was something they were proud to be. Exactly. And that's a real name. Unless you had blonde hair and blue eyes. Then like I said, you. why are you calling me a Guido? Let me tell you something, Michael. Nobody believes you're Italian. Well, I mean, maybe that's a good thing. And maybe, I, yeah. I do remember, it. a lot of people ask me, why don't you speak Italian? Because when my mother moved from Italy to New Jersey, and then she had the kids, she said to me and my two brothers, when we were old enough to comprehend, Capisce? <laughs> don't speak Italian. That's the enemy's language. And so we thought, oh, okay, we, we might as well not speak that. And why would they think that? Because <laughs> they came over on a boat, and they were petrified, because now they are, in America. Yes. And my parents and everybody had dark hair, dark eyes, and dark skin. And you came out white. <laughs> my well, my father's a little Sicilian, so we had the blonde hair and the blue eyes. So I looked like a surfer growing up. Hence, that's why I was always doing TV commercials, because I looked like the old American boy. But technically, I'm first-generation Italian. You are first-generation Italian, but your yeah, father didn't talk to side. me in Italian. They both flew in Italian when, when you know, my father's still alive, but my mother passed. But when they were alive, they would speak Italian in front of the kids, and we didn't know what, what they were talking about. So it was almost their weapon to yeah, so you, you know, do things yeah, and, and like, not let us know. My kids speak Hebrew in front of me just to screw me over, but that's okay. That's hilarious. Is that just terrible? Yes. For all the money I spend, this is what they do. Mike, let me tell you something. This is one of the craziest things. We have a connection. Um, I never had, I've never met your mom. You knew that. Right. But I had these dreams about Mike Marino's mom that, remember, it was three of them. And she wanted me to return a book, and she kept saying, you never borrow something without returning it. And <laughs> it was just so bizarre that I was dreaming about your mother. Yeah. And there was a painting, and it was three dreams. And I don't know what that meant, but I want to tell you something. I met the real Mr. Marino, like his dad. That's Mr. Marino. Let me tell you, your father is funny. He's a trip. He's a trip. And can you imagine the things that they say that they can't say anymore? One of the trippiest things that happened, by the way, in doing a pilot with him, my father, who was with Manzo back in the day, that yeah. raised me. How could a butcher recognize me after all those years? Unbelievable. Michael. Michael. You know, I, we still have an opportunity. Let's talk about it. To then. get that uh, sitcom up and going. I've been meeting more and more people, more influential people, and... Um, I really hope that we can get something like that going because the world needs to see that, especially now. You know, that town of Scotch Plains, uh, what are we supposed to do? Say they live in a bubble? Nobody fights. I went to a school, it was 50-50. And nobody got in an argument, nobody, nothing. They were more concerned, was our football team going to win the game? Was the baseball team going to win the game? Was the soccer team, was the marching band big enough? So what do you think changed everything, social media? Either social media, I don't know, maybe millennials. Of course, what's going on in the world because, you know, it is a, it is tragic. Isn't it tragic? No, it's ridiculous. You know damn well if... if it's wrong. I, I, Mike, we can't even get into it the way we want to because I'll get in trouble. And you know I'll get in trouble in the black community all the time. Like, lately they've been talking about, I um, suddenly went natural after George Floyd. I was like, no, I didn't. Oh, wow. My brother died and I, didn't, I decided I wasn't going to straighten my hair anymore. But what happened to that man should not have happened. I don't care what his record was. What happened that was not happening then. And to have my friends from Jersey send me stuff like, Sunday, isn't it enough? No, I mean, they're trying to tell you something. They're freaking out in Beverly Hills. Hey, Mike, they don't have that. This ain't Patterson. They don't mm -hmm. know what's going on. Freaking out. Yeah. They're hiring their own private people. The, the security. Listen, if you're going to do anything in stocks, Invest in Sonatrol and Honeywell because I'm telling you something. <laughs> ADP is making money too. Yeah. And that's the real deal. And that's the real deal. So many things have come out of this, and you're not going to believe this. I had a guest here today, and he was leaving, and I said to him, I really want you to meet somebody who's special to me. And I'm sorry I was talking about you when you were gone. I was talking about Mike behind his back about I didn't get fruit yet, and all of a sudden the voice is like, I walked in the door. The, no, the other door. <laughs> the one I'm not looking for, and he's like, "Do you see me eating fruit?" But right now, if I'm you, not a fruit guy. He's not a fruit guy. He's not a fruit guy. But he likes uh, meatballs. I do. I'm gonna switch it over. Andre, come and meet and sit down. Let's have some fun here with the one and only.
Michael Marino. Oh, my gosh. I'm so honored. You should be. I'm going to introduce so him again. Oh, so. Three-time wi- three time Grammy winner. Are you sitting here with me on this side? They're close and personal now. Look, I have all my mics covered. I know. They are. I have everything covered. Oh, my God. Yes, this is the one from down the shore. This is my guy from Uncle Vinny's. Yes. <laughs> Somebody asked you that question? I haven't been to Uncle Vinny's in a long, yes, long time. Yes, he hasn't been to Uncle Vinny's in a long time, but he, we are going to come back. We will be back. Let me tell you. Here we go. Andre mm-hmm. and Mike, performers. Black, white, beautiful. Mm-hmm. Grammy winner. Let me tell you. I'm sharing the bench with him. Eh. It's a big deal. Eh. It's a big it's deal. It's a big deal. <laughs> it's, a big deal. <laughs> <laughs> it's such a big no. deal to make a comedian get quiet. <laughs> <laughs> that is a big deal. because I, I got nothing to say anymore. <laughs> Well, Mike, come on. You sing a little bit. Come on. No, you I don't to sing. tell nothing. No, I don't do none of that. Now, listen. I think that I brought Andre in for a reason. You know, he says that I always put people in boxes, and I didn't mean to do that. Like, I'll say so-and-so is Cuban. I'll say so-and-so is Italian. That's how we do it, so we know she who the guy is, right? boxing, everybody. But know. I try to just... It's, it's not though. boxing. It's like I want you to know in advance. Yes, she really do. Like, and I... I will, I will defend you, Cinder, because I see you do it with all your friends. Like all of them. If she loves you, she's going because she could literally be like, right, <laughs> right. When I don't like you, I don't like you. She'd be like, I'm like, if Cinder's quiet, it's a problem. Oh yeah, because I'm never quiet. <laughs> never I'm never quiet. quiet. I'm and never I, quiet. Let me just tell you something. I had the best time with Mike. I was sitting in an electric chair. We were at the Paramount oh. in Asbury Park. I saw no, something. that electric chair was at the Paramount that was in Long Island. Oh, yeah. Huntington, Long Island. Huntington, they had their, right. all the antiques. Yes, and we were in an yeah. electric chair. You were. You sat in that chair. <laughs> yes. It was a real electric chair from back in the day because the guy had collectibles. Yes. Antiques and stuff like that. Yes. And each one of the dressing rooms or the waiting rooms or the dinner rooms had a theme. So you were in one of the rooms that the theme was like the Rocky Horror Picture Show. I think I can't. Yeah, yeah, it was bizarre. Unbelievable. It was unbelievable. Do you know where you were? Where we were? Yes, the Paramount in Huntington, Long Island, mm. where they mostly have musicians do yeah. big shows. It's a big music place. Mm-hmm. Beautiful. Beautiful. All Andre. renovated. They have what? the uh, radio show within it. And, uh, really? It's run by um, Live Nation. Yes. Oh. So, okay. Andre, are we trying to drag you into this comedy world? I know, right? Because you I know something? Mike, we are sitting next to a Grammy winner, and like we're comics, so we're like, you know, that's cool what he does. Very rarely does a comedian get a Grammy. Isn't that yeah. sad? I'm pretty yeah, sure a few have gotten is, one. This very yeah. few, yeah. And that's a hard, hard goal. So you can imagine just how hard of a goal it is to achieve as an artist in the music industry. Yeah. And so he's sitting here. <laughs> I'm on the show. Can you can you <laughs> say can you say that it's never I'm too on late? The show. I know, right? <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. I, know, I, I have to bring him. His, I have to give him the good juju. He gave. I have to bring him the juju. <laughs> Can we say juju? Can, say juju? Yeah, Can we yeah. say juju? juju. <laughs> this is the. Ju- you know what? That's J-U, really J-U, juju. You know why this is important, Andre? Because we're talking about how change is going to happen in music, and now Mike Marino is on. Yes. Now, how's this going to change? What's happening now? Uh, I wouldn't know how the music industry is going to change. Maybe you do. Um. I feel like everything's gonna change because everything's gonna get blacker. Oh yeah. Yeah. And then what's Mike gonna do? Mike's black. I'll get too. more Italian. Mike, <laughs> Mike's, Mike's. He's gonna get more Sicilian. <laughs> <laughs> okay, he said it. <laughs> <laughs> he said it. Tip of the boot. Yeah. He said it, as long yeah. as he says it. Man, it was cool. Yeah, a little more Sicilian. Do you think we should take the word "nigga" out of all the songs? No. No, I feel like. I feel like the people that deserved it. See, you know what? I, okay, I love that we have this this talk because a lot of people are like, well, why you 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 say it, so why should we get to say it? You you also like my name's Andre. You don't say my name. You see what I'm saying? You want to choose what you want to say, but you want to. So why don't you call me by my name? If you want to call me something, well, you get to say it. Yeah, I get to say it because it's it has to do with me. It has to do, it, it comes, it wasn't something that I created. It was something that was created to defend something that was doing, done to my people. So you, I just want to know why you want to use it so bad. Because it's cool. 
No. That's what the kids say. Andre. Fuck that. Andre. I don't care. What well, kids says it's cool. cool? All of them. You should hear them. Cool. You know, it's like seeing never... Persian kid talking like this about my nigga. Yeah, they all do. Yeah, well. Wow. It's been, it's been, it's doing that because. Is that now, is that part of the culture now? Is it part of the culture? It's not part of a culture. No, it's not. They're just it? doing it. The thing about it is the culture is so big now that there's no one to really watch anyone anymore. See, there used to be someone, there used to be people like, what do you call it? Like uh, gatekeepers or people that just watch and be like, yo, don't do that. Or, you know, there's nobody doing that anymore because everything is at home now. We do everything at home. We can, you can, you can, you can record a whole album at home. If you want to be a comedian, you can be at home. Everything's at home. So it's like when you, when you, when you, um, I forgot what I was gonna say. Never happens. Yeah. Take it. We're trying to take that word. Yeah. Out of oh, the music. Oh, that's what I'm saying. Yeah. And and the thing about it is like, um, you, it's it's too much attached to it. Like I feel like there's people that are using it that don't know about it and. They're trying to be cool, and it's like, that's not the way to be cool. That's how you get punched. That's how you get punched. <laughs> it's not a way to be cool. Like, because people be. You you're Italian, what? you agree. Yeah. <laughs> See, you're, I'm, we're from, I'm from that. I still believe that, too. It's like, because social media has made it so that it's like really, like, people, you know, they got away with saying stuff, and nobody, there's no, you know, and I'm like, well, back in my day, they catch you, it's over. Done. And people think, like, they're not going to do nothing. It's only social media. And I've seen people right here on Melrose and all and get they ass whooped. Do you hear me? Why? Because they've been talking noise online about somebody and they didn't think that that person was ever going to see them in person. And so the person's like, oh, wow, that's the person that called my mom or talked about my mom, you know, having cancer. I'm about to go and beat her to death. And wow. I've seen at least six of those fights. Yeah. So, I mean, you can say what you want, but do it at your own risk. <laughs> well, see, now I'm going to agree. I agree with that. I never used the word. It was never in my family. And it's, it's not necessary for me. Especially. Never was. Because you can just say Never it. was a month ago, a year ago, since I was a kid. I love Zero. That. I don't need it. Yeah. And then, you know, we see... Uh, sometimes this particular word being used amongst uh, people who get a, uh, I wouldn't even know how to describe it, as like, say, a sign of affection. Like Italians you. would say to each other, right. hey, Ginzalone, right. come here, give me right, a hug. Right. Cuisine. Now, that's okay for us because we know it's a sign of affection. But if you were to really research the word, maybe we shouldn't be saying that <laughs> yeah. to each other. Mm. So that's okay. And and I don't I really don't do the whole thing of that. Uh, let, let's put it this way. I'm glad you guys find that funny. I was she trying to be have a serious I know, moment. I'm laughing at her, laughing at him being serious. No, no listen. Because you can say because I know I I know my father never said it because he he would say the M word, not the N word. Wow, that's very very slang. Not even any a lot of people understood that. Because but it's it was vegan, huh? It's vegan. <laughs> vegan. <laughs> that had to do with. The color of, of the, the color actual of the plant. I don't even know. What, it's is, an it, is it a vegetable? It's I don't even know what it is. Quite honestly, right. I never liked so it. The, I, I, hate, I, I hate eggplant. I, I hate. <laughs> is it? We should go to a commercial break. <laughs> we have to. For that him is to say hilarious. That. You know what it means, right, Andre? Uh. -uh. It's like a slang for us. Is it? What's it mean? Yo, my eggplant. What's up? You know what I mean? Moon but why, but why they, oh. Because of the skin color. Oh. Yeah, and but that's how you say that eggplant in Italian. I know that. My father taught me. And yeah. he also taught me <laughs> what to go down up the street to the Biondo Brothers and get a half a pound of nigger toes, right? So. Oh, wow. Well, are you talking about slang from another generation? Never, oh, listen to me. Do you know what they're called? Then somebody told me, no, that's not what they're called. They're called Brazilian toes. I said, they're Brazilian nuts as an adult. That's what I heard they yeah. are. Well, what's on the package? Man, I haven't no heard package. that in a hundred years. But then... My father used to get things off trucks kind of thing that fell. Everybody did. Oh, There's nothing. Listen, and the Italians have a bad reputation for that, and that's terrible. And I always tell my daughters, I said, you have to respect the Italian people and stop laughing, laughing at the Sopranos. It's not a comedy, but it really is the best show ever written. Well, that's why I'm actually lucky I do what I do. Because it, when I talk about me and my family, and we do that whole play on the words of the Sopranos, I threw it through the eyes of comedy. And I mean, and that's that's fun that way. Oh, watch yourself. There you go. You got Oh, are you okay, Andre? I got it. You got it. Yeah, you got, got it. So what Italian songs could Andre introduce into his repertoire? Because who's the rapper that did that? Who did the Frenchie? Um uh it's it's a song, it's a rapper, Cardi oh, yeah. B. Uh, a, well, that I don't know. 
Yeah, it's a it's a, it's an Italian song though. I know it's from a wedding. I know it's from an Italian wedding. I hear it all the time, but they've changed it. Oh really? How can you bring rap and Italian music together like Dean Martin and you Andre can. Merrick? Dre no, you definitely can. Dre, how could you? How could we get these kids to stop using the like? I'm trying to just make everybody calm. First of all, to calm down, calm down. That seems fun. Well, Danny Aiello was doing it before he passed away. He was working with some rappers, and he had some great songs they were putting down. They were great. Is any of They were fun. I felt bad when he died. Yeah. He's a legendary guy. He's a That'd legendary really cool. guy. Did you ever meet him? Mm -mm. He was in Spike Lee's um, She's Gotta Have It. I mean, I'm just telling you. Uh, uh, um, was it? Uh, I forgot the name already. Do the Right Thing. Do the right, uh, yeah. Um, what was it? Um, what else did I want to say? Moonstruck. Yeah. He got nominated for an Oscar as performance and, in Moonstruck. And was upset with Madonna and Papa Don't Preach because his daughter just wanted an, a, an autograph and she caught an attitude. That's what I remember that. Oh, is that right? Yeah. I don't know. I mean, know. he played her dad. Papa, huh. don't preach. Is that when she's having a baby? I'm keeping yeah. my baby. Now, yeah. now she's banging baby. So what's different? <laughs> what's the difference? <laughs> Cher's boyfriend is 27, everybody. Cher's boyfriend is 27. And, I don't uh, have a problem with the age. I don't, I'm telling you. Me I don't either. think so. I was like, as long as it's still working down there. Yeah. What can you do? It. Yeah, it's like, what? So Cher wants to get 27. Why, why not? See, now he said, as long as it's still working down there. Now, there's a topic any comedian can go with and not be offensive to anybody. Because right. I went to see my doctor to get my cholesterol checked, mm -hmm. and he said, how's your testosterone, Mike? <laughs> and I go, well, I don't know. And he goes, well, how are things working downstairs? And I'm like, they could be better. He goes, let me give you a shot of testosterone. <laughs> Thank you for the jokes. <laughs> I'm going to win a Grammy. <laughs> <laughs> he needs to be on stage. I keep telling him he has to get on stage because as a musician, you need your patter, you know? I am. I'm going to do it. I'm going to do it. I really hope you do. I'm going to do it. I'm going to do it. It's fun. I mean, you know, it's really, I mean, it's not like I don't have anything to talk about. There's so much. You know, I think I think I would have too much. I'd be like, okay, somebody let me know when I should Believe stop. me, they'll give you the light. But just yeah. talk about <laughs> meeting on the street, Mike. Tell him. I'm a Jersey girl, right? Right. I think I know him from Orange, New Jersey. I'm Oh, he okay. looks like my cousin Ruben, first right. of all. And I, I'm coming from seeing Larry King, so I, I have my glasses on. That's my old day. I run up to him. I was like, oh, my God. And I really literally grabbed this poor black really man did. and hugged him. I'm so happy to see a black person in Beverly Hills, too, on top of it all. <laughs> all right. Yes. Yeah. And I really hugged him. And his, his friend was there all buffed and scared of me. And then and we just started him. talking. He hated me. Yeah, he's hated me. But then he started being cool. Yeah. That's okay. But that's how I met him. Mm -hmm. When are you going to meet people on the street again? Now, no one doesn't believe that story. Yeah. I didn't meet him online because. Mm -mm. You know, it's funny that you say that because I'm used to meeting people on the street, walking around in the neighborhood, and you know who he was going to say hello to and who wasn't going to say hello to you. Their demeanor's in their face. You yeah. can see the smile. That's right. Yep. You know, you He's feel absolutely it. Right. You know who to stay, to stay next to and go, go on the other side of the street. And, and I, I, I miss that. Yeah, I miss it too. I miss that. So I became more nice now to people than I've ever been in my life. I say hello to everybody, yep. and if somebody don't say hello to me back, I crack up laughing. Yeah. It's not my loss. Absolutely. Sorry you don't feel that way. And, you know, now walking around with a mask on, you got to hope your eyes say something <laughs> joyful. <laughs> you know, I do lower my mask from time to time. But, you know, quite honestly, uh, I love all people, I really do. But we do realize that there is an asshole in every shade. Yes. We yes. have our yes. own assholes. I know. And you feel like going up to him going, you're an asshole. <laughs> Can't you shut up? Yeah. Shut up. Yes. Maybe you really don't know. Maybe you should <laughs> ask somebody. Absolutely. Who knows? I'm not afraid. <laughs> what, why would you be? You know, and mm -hmm. then you become exposed expressive less because I become afraid mm -hmm. to say what I'm thinking. So I'll give you for instance. Now, my best friend here in Los Angeles lives in the apartment across from me. I've known him for 25 years. Mm -hmm. He has the keys to my apartment, the keys to my car, the keys to my life. Mm -hmm. He's black. And a long time ago, not a long time, but about four years ago, I had a funny feeling that a friend of mine who was staying in my apartment passed away because we couldn't find him. Get out. This is a true story. He did pass away in my apartment. He had a heart attack, and he was gone, and nobody could find him. Wow. So I had to call my neighbor and say, hey, man, 
got the keys to my house. Is there a car in front of the building that looks like this? And he said, yeah. And I said, here's what we're going to do. You're going to call one of my other friends. He's going to come over, and the two of you are going to walk into my house. And he knew why I said that. Of course, because you don't know how it happened. Wow. No, because, you know, could you imagine him going in there, finding a dead yeah. guy? And, and he got a call. Of You're right. Yes. So, okay, right. I'm sensitive to the game. Hmm. I knew what was going on. Mm -hmm. And he appreciated that. He knew exactly where I was coming from. Michael, I didn't even think of it that way. But yeah. can you imagine brother standing there talking about, yeah, because I'm in this white man's apartment because... Mike. And the funniest thing is, when I first met him, he had this, there was another black guy who lived in the building, and they're both jacked, good-looking, I mean, good-looking brothers, mm. dreadlocks. So when I first walked into the building, they happened to be standing there talking amongst each other because the one guy's a musician, he plays the drums, I think he was in the Daz band. Mm. Not exactly. And the other guy is a sound mixer. He does music, too. So they're standing there. And here comes uh, Ginzaloon from Jersey <laughs> with my Cabaricis on. <laughs> and I see them standing there. And I go like this. This must be a great place to live. Look at you two. <laughs> I, I didn't even know Millie Vanilli got back together. And they just lost it. Because they're looking at me like, why would he talk like that? Uh, yeah. Because they look like them, and it was funny. We, we say what's on our minds, wow. I think. And now uh, we're all best friends. Never changed for a minute. Yeah. Mike, I'm going to tell I, you. I need a ride to the airport. Lomax, what are you doing? Can you hook me up? Really? Yeah. yeah. It's so cool. Yeah. Really dope. And, and we're all still, still friends. So the other day, I walk in the morning. I go to the track. There's a track where I exercise. And you see all different kinds of people. It says on the ground, this is for walking, this is for slow walking, this is for the bike, this is for the fast bike, this is for, <laughs> and you gotta obey the law, okay? There's not that many people walking around anymore because they're afraid and everybody got the mask on. So I'm standing still in the walking slow thing and here comes a cracker biker, <laughs> whiter than white, sorry, with his helmet on and his glasses. <laughs> And he's got plenty of room. Mm -hmm. And he says to me, oh, come on, man. Yep. Because I'm in the way. In the way. Now, I really feel like going Jersey on the guy and oh. sticking my foot in his spokes, watching him trip and beat the shit <laughs> out of the guy. That's how you do it. Yep. Because why? <laughs> wh why? Yep. There's plenty of room oh. here. But see, that's what I said. There's an asshole in every color of the rainbow. Absolutely. That's an asshole. There's nothing else to say. Yep. That's it. Later on in the day, here comes a heavy set, let's say out of shape, black guy walking the other way with a tiny little dog. And I'm walking this way. I made sure that I'm not breaking the little track <laughs> law <laughs> at all. <laughs> and what does he say to me? Hey, man, how you doing? And I said, I'm doing good. How you doing? And as soon as I walked by, I started crying. Wow. It's so sad. I started yeah. crying because you feel like going, is anybody paying attention? Sensitive. Yes. We yeah. get Michael. along. We get along. We didn't say nothing. Yeah. He's yeah. happy. He'd have no reason to say Absolutely. hello to me other than he's just a happy guy. Yeah. So doesn't that mean there's an asshole in every breed? Yeah. Too bad we couldn't get all the assholes Absolutely. of all the different colors Absolutely. saying, now you get out. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> and go back let to us, asshole land where you yes. came from. Let yeah. us go be. And I'm telling you, Mike has taken me on tour with him. I already know. I, can I mean, we have oh, yeah. we have such a great mix of black people that come out that have never seen him before. My niece tells me when he's performing in NJ Pack. I mean, it's Italians. I guess I guess Patterson. That's what it was. It was Italians and blacks because it was a silk mill. Funny is funny, well, yeah. and it's open to everybody. And any age. Thank God. You know what my last show was. You're not even going to believe it. I couldn't believe it, but yet I could believe it. Why would? Why not? And this is real. This is a true story. My last show was March 15th in Leavenworth, Kansas. I was hired to entertain. This woman was turning 80 years old, and I'm the prize for the birthday party. <laughs> Did they make you go in, sh in pants? Like the lady who calls me up is the daughter, and she said, how much? And they gave me a nice ticket. I'm like, holy crap, okay, I'm on my way. 
She goes, do you want to come in a day early? We celebrate for four days. And I says, well, good for you guys. <laughs> All right, I'll come in a day early. I've never been to Leavenworth. Maybe I'll get to go see the prison and, right, and videotape exactly. and, and look. Right. And on my way, when I finally got into the town, they picked me up. Everything is perfect. And uh, But I knew going in, it was a... Uh, you got to take it? No, I don't. No. I got to call you back. <laughs> go ahead. I couldn't hang up. Sorry. Are you ready for this? I'm ready for this. Yeah, I'm like... 200 black people. I was the only white guy in the room. Of course, Mike. When the lady called me and said, my mom really wants you, and I says, why me? Why me? Out of all the comedians that you could pick, why me? Because my mother belongs to the Red Hatter Society, oh. and they saw you performing in Vegas. And she said, oh, I just want to pinch his cheeks. you got to get him. <laughs> Oh, so black black ladies with the red hats? The red hatters, yes. right? So now I go to the party. When I'm at the party, the daughter goes up on stage and she goes, Now nah, I know y'all wondering who the white boy in the back of the <laughs> <laughs> And she goes, that's my mother's favorite comedian. We flew him in and he's here for our enjoyment. Oh, so wow. I go up on the stage and what do you think I said? <laughs> I don't know why she said that. She, I told her damn well I'm not white. I'm Italian. And they all started screaming. <laughs> they loved and it, then right? I never saw black Angus cows. I don't know if you've ever seen them. There's a difference between a black Angus cow and, and cow. regular cows. Right, I know. The black Angus cow looks like a bull without horns, and they're really, really big, and they're out in these beautiful green fields. So in the car on the way over... I said to the guy driving the car, and he says, are they bulls? And he started laughing. He goes, no, they're Black Angus cows. That's where they get the name of that steak place, Black Angus. <laughs> and I go, oh, wow, well, how, who would know that? And he goes, um, everybody. <laughs> <laughs> so when I went on stage, and I said, what's with you people? Why'd you take the horns off those bulls? They're everywhere. And they're like, this kid's ridiculous. <laughs> <laughs> and they started screaming. <laughs> So now I just go really into my act. Aches and pains, the way the world has changed, mm. going to the stores. I never changed the word. Yep. I didn't curse. I didn't swear. I was very respectful. Standing ovation. Everybody's hugging me, talking to me, asking me where they could get me for, for the future. Night comes and goes. Everything is great. Guess where I had to go? Not had to go, but I went. The next day? For church. Church. With church, them, they right? made me come to I know, church. I, I can't. Oh, he went to the church. Was there a black church? Did you sing? Yeah. No, I didn't sing. I <laughs> can't sing. But <laughs> the pastor talked about me Oh. in front of everybody. Now, the 200 people from the party weren't all there, and there were other people from wherever that weren't at the party. So how's this pastor going to talk about me? And you know what he said? Ladies and gentlemen, I was at a party last night. I don't think I've ever laughed that hard in my life. The gift of the Lord is in this young Italian man's throat. I think I see him in the back. In fact, I think everybody could see him. That is, yep. And I'm sitting there going, I'm going to bore my eyes out. Because I feel beautiful. like I'm really Accept it. blessed. Yes, yes, you are blessed. And accept it. Then they had another party, an after, after party. At 2 o'clock in what would have been and you would love this too, a classic jazz and blues club from back in the day. Oh, uh, yeah. Yeah, you would and love it that. Just, I would it just looked like you're in a, a movie from, from an era gone by. And they asked me if I would say a few things, and I'm like, uh, okay. And I don't think they did this on purpose, but they had spaghetti and meatballs being served at the brunch. <laughs> Spaghetti and meatballs being served at the brunch. From Kansas. I don't know. They, they had a caterer. You know, everything know. was top of the line. So uh, the pasta was in a plate or, or bowl. Okay. And so you just get your pasta and you put it in your, and then you would yeah. take the sauce the and gravy. you would put it on. Right. So we don't do that. <laughs> That's not the way the Italians do it. No, you no. mix that stuff up. Right away. <laughs> you, don't, you, don't, you don't separate that. You don't that. separate nothing. No. No. That's, that's no. The guy. I ain't even Italian and I know that. Put it together. So when I went on and stage, and I go like this, you just can't stop pu punking me, huh, people? 
You think this is funny that you separated your pasta from the sauce? Yo, <laughs> I would have fell out. <laughs> and they were just having a ball. Now it's politically incorrect to say having a ball, isn't it? Or you no, have to have know. two? I don't we even believe We had such in a good time. Correct. It was isn't it nice to have like a good time when you do a gig and you're having fun and it's not you have to have to be worried about politics, religion, whatever. The only time that I was very concerned is Mike called me. I was in New York and he said something bad happened at the Net Laugh Factory last night. I had left and I flew out to New York the next day. I left and took a late show. Something happened, but when that guy said the N word at the Laugh oh. Factory, Mike said, Sunday, you know where you're from and you know where I'm from and we know each other, but this is bad. Yeah. And I said, What do you mean? I said, Everybody says the N word. He goes, No, no, this is bad. You're going to see. And I couldn't yeah. understand until the news came on. I, w I went next. After that? Yes. Yeah. Oh, shit. But I wasn't scheduled to be next. And you know what's really funny? The truth of the story, the I way know. it really went down, was really not the way the news portrayed it. Yeah, I know. they caught him. He did not he need to do what he did. But the. The week before it happened was a little bit different, and after it happened was a little bit different, and it actually didn't break in the news until Sunday right? at Chocolate Sunday. Mm. That was a Friday night. I was not supposed to be next. He was on stage in the, the middle show. I was supposed to go last in the last show. Mm -hmm. I was outside with Brother Woods, who worked there at yep. that time. <laughs> And uh, about six guys came up to the door, and it was multicultures. It wasn't just a bunch of um, black people headed in for the last show. Like they said, it was a, a black guy in the tower that was having an argument with him. He, it wasn't. It wasn't. It was a bunch of other knuckleheads. And they were changing Who shows. were actually just having fun. That's it. Fun. A skilled comedian would have knocked that down in seconds. But he is not a skilled comedian. He never was. No. And he couldn't see. So he assumed that he was being heckled by a black guy. He wasn't. But to and I was standing own. there with Sinbad. But so they come into the door and he goes, who's in the midnight show? My buddy turning 21. If there's anybody in the show that can razz him a little bit. So Brother Woods goes, well, Marino's in the last show. I go, I'm in the last show. Where's your buddy? Meaning, like, I would just say, hey, happy birthday, right. give yeah. a drink yeah. of any culture. I don't care. It's a party. Yeah. Right. That's what we do. It's a party. Like, so the sure. Brother Woods, <laughs> being a cool dude, Sinbad, me, he goes, well, why don't you kids go in there now? If it's his birthday, catch the last few minutes of Michael Richards. Mark, what was his Michael name? Michael Richards. Michael Richards. From Seinfeld. So they go inside. They oh, walk yeah. upstairs. They go into the tower. So that's the noise he heard. Just being seated. They're just being just seated. Just being seated. Just That's a true story. Their drinks. They were so just the getting seated. Packed, they're getting their drinks. So I don't know what he said, but I'm pretty sure the kid goes, Hey, man, it's my buddy's birthday. Raz him up. And he said something like, Just shut up and let me do my thing. Whereas a skilled comedian went, No kidding, it's your birthday, man. Hey, let yeah. me send that guy yeah. a drink. Happy birthday to right. the rest of the Give him a. Yeah. Anything. Mm -hmm. We have the power to say, send him a drink. Absolutely. Yes. And the club owner's going to love you for doing that. So he went on to say another thing or two. Michael got a little annoyed. He said another thing or two. And he goes, uh, why don't you just shut the fuck up? And the kid goes, oh, man, you suck. And he can't take and that. And that's what set that off. Because he's a bad comedian. And then Horrible. you have the comedians getting ready to go on next against the wall going, oh, man, I wonder what he's trying. Some new shit. Saying, we, we, saying 50 we, years ago, we're going to throw you upside down, put a pitchfork in your ass, oh, nigger, he, nigger, he, nigger. He, he, I don't know. It's terrible. It, it didn't go that That's way. He, he actually said, I make so much money, I could buy your life. I, I make so He mentioned money and this, that, and the other thing. Wow. So the whole thing becomes a nightmare. He nightmare. throws down the microphone, walks off the stage. All of a sudden, Masada comes over to me and goes, come on, Marino, clean that up. I go, what do you mean me? Clean it up. <laughs> he goes, you know what to do. Come on, clean that up. So Frazier Smith, I know. The host, so sorry the about that, stage. folks. <laughs> Frazier goes, um, uh, well, uh, we're just going to let you all stay for the next show wow. and not turn out the show. So they didn't have to leave. They got to stay to watch the next show. So all of a sudden, Frazier goes, here's Mike Marino. So I'm like, okay. 
The staff is afraid to come in and cash out the checks because they're thinking it's going to be a riot. Uh, Everybody there's, there's no did. no bouncers in here. This is a Not place of bouncers. happiness. This is happy time. <laughs> Brother Woods, what is he, in his right. 60s? Uh, Brother Woods. So uh, I went on stage and I went like this and I go, yeah, uh, man, I got to be honest with you. I don't know what, what, what it is about you brothers here in California. If you ever talk like that where I'm from in New Jersey, they'd have stabbed them six times before you ever got to the yeah! top. And I go, I go, I don't know what you're waiting for. He's right over there. And I pointed at him. That probably killed. I know they just... They started screaming. screaming right? And they're like this. And I went like this. Good thing you didn't say nothing about the Italians. Yeah! And that was it. Fire. Not another word. Professional. We are professional. Everybody started professional. laughing and joking. And... Unfortunately, they threw the birthday party out because I looked up to my left, which is where they would have been, and I said, uh, what happened to my family? I told them to wait for me over there. <laughs> and so they all just started cheering. <laughs> then for some reason or other, he never Apologize. put the other comedians on the stage. He just said, I right, let Marino go. So instead of doing 20 minutes, I was up there for like 45 minutes wow. looking at my watch going, well, I wonder what happened. Sweating bullets, right? sweating yeah. bullets. I know, it's hot. No, they were probably just saying, you know what, he got him. Leave it alone. Leave it alone. Leave it alone. Yeah, because it's already been crazy. And don't address it. Nope. And the next night when I went to the club on Saturday night was the early show. I know. He was in that show. I know, and he didn't say I'm sorry. And I was hosting. So when Thank the you. owner said introduce him big, he's nervous, I'm like, why is he here? Because yes. he promised like, he'd you... make an apology. I don't know. He didn't do it. But you should have saw my introduction. I go like this, ladies and gentlemen, this guy, next guy coming to the stage, you know him from being on television. He did a show here last night. He was unbelievable. Watch. <laughs> Here he is. <laughs> Here he is. So he goes up there and he did his thing. Not a word. Everything was fine. He did his thing. But I just happened to be in uh, Chocolate Sunday that Sunday. That's and crazy. I went to the show. And that's when everybody was like, hey, here comes Marino, and the cameras went on. And I was kind of like, what happened? What happened? And they were like, it's all over the news. And then I was in the Boston paper, I was in this paper and that paper, and everybody was asking me, so what did you do? And I'm like, I went to work. I didn't Stated even know there was. I, I didn't really. Yeah. I got a lot of slack, You didn't really though. have to do anything. You were well, you see how, let me tell you, we were talking about insular racism, and I'm not going to go into it, but you don't know how many sisters and brothers reached out to me saying, I know you're not going back up on that stage after what happened. You cannot mm. go back on that stage. You cannot. You have to. But I had to. You have to go there because it's not about... It wasn't about me. Yeah, it's about, it's about what you stand for and who you are. Like you, It's not like you can take your blackness out of your skin. So why shouldn't she go? But you have to go. You have to go represent. That's what I was thinking. But they're saying going there isn't representing. But they would have taken my spot, guaranteed. Yeah, exactly. I can't explain what I mean, but okay, I should not go up because of what he said about black people. I didn't do anything. Yeah. Now, at a, because of him, all of a sudden, we had the clean show I was the host of, which really did help me a lot. It did help tremendously when you were trying to get ready for sets like that. Yeah. How could we get a comedy album with you and Marino together rapping and telling jokes? Uh. He's running for president again. <laughs> you know, I'm being very cautious about half the things I'm going to do now. Yeah, you got to. Can't run this year? He ran for president. <laughs> Fictitiously, I came up with a couple of slogans that were funny, mm. and people was making people laugh. And uh, what I would do if I was the president through the eyes of a guy who's a connected man. Mm. And it was getting big laughs. Oh. It did one joke on Byron Allen's show, hit 14 million people. Mm. So I'm going to change some words around. Why? Do we have to? You know, whether you like the president, you don't like the president, he says some knuckleheaded I stuff, know. man. It's like, dude, dude. See, could somebody finesse this man? Finesse him. Does, I... does anybody it... write his speech? Nobody for him? writes for him. What's he's a writer. Somebody? Say something. He's talking like Let he's in me New York. Do it. Yes, he's talking like like he's in New York. He really... sounds like my homie. He really be talking like. To be honest, you know, I tell people like, cause um, I don't know if you told him, but I was, I had been called a Trumpster. Oh yeah, that's how I wanted you have you. That's why I wanted to have you on, Mike. So this brother comes on to help me out with a show, and now people are saying that they didn't know this brother was a Trumpster, and since when are black people going to the Republican thing? Go ahead. And they didn't even know me, period. Yeah. So they didn't know I was a Trumpster. I'm like, you don't know anything about me. How can you call me a Trumpster? You never. You do you know my music? Do you know what I 
stand for, who I stand for. You don't know anything. I think the, the thing about social media, why I don't really get into it that much, because it's like <laughs> everybody just talks out of their ass because they know that no one can see them really. And it's like, my thing is, I'll give you the credit. You call me a tramp stood in my face, and I'm like, okay, this is legit. And because that way I can at least address who it is. But when it's like, people are like, well, you know, it's just like, well, Trump said, well, what are you? If I'm a, if, I don't mind you calling me a Trumpster, but I just need to know who's calling me it. Yeah. So I can see who the f you are <laughs> and then go in your life and make fun of all your life and just go and then see how you like that. Because that's what it really boils down to. It's like, oh, we're being mean. This has nothing to do with race. You're being a, like you said, an asshole. Yeah. So <laughs> an that asshole. means what I look at it for is like, oh, you're going to, well, let me show you where, how I can be an asshole. And see, people don't like when you're an asshole back to an asshole. It's weird. I don't know. Isn't don't. that weird? Yeah. <laughs> you would think assholes would be friends, but they're not. Because they, it's hard to be an asshole and a friend at the same time. It's weird. It's kind of hard. It's kind of like because friendship, you know, it kind of starts all up here. And then the asshole is down here and it has like shit in it. And, it's, you know, and so it's hard to put the shit with the friendship. So, you know, it's kind of hard, you know, to push it. It's like a shit. Oh, a friendship. A friendship. A friendship. That's what, uh, yeah. A friendship is what it should be called. A lot of friendships out here. What do you think's happening with this election, Mike? Seriously. Yeah. I don't know. The titty pincher or the other one? I've written, or the penny pincher? I'm, I'm writing my pilot because I'm they hoping to start shooting. I hope so. And I, I you know, we're going to involve a lot of different people. We have to in be my diversity, pilot. okay. Well, I would have anyway. You did. I like to call when we shoot my pilot. I know. Um, I want that anyway. You have I, to. I want. I guess if you have to, you have to. But I always wanted it anyway. Because you're used to it. Yeah, and it's funny. <laughs> yeah, of course, it's funny. It's a, yeah. You got to brighten up that vanilla a little you, bit. <laughs> you want every point of view. It's yeah. funny, mm -hmm. like this thing that they passed the law about the. Uh, I never, and I hope nobody gets mad at me, but I never get the acronyms cor correct. I'm not from oh, the, the acronym LBGT. Yeah, I just said that earlier. Okay. Like, yeah, he know. just said this. He just said this. Well, I think, I think it's, it's actually great. Good for them. Yeah. Okay, cool. Yeah. I ain't got no problem with that. Nobody hurts anybody. I just feel like saying, you know what? Why don't you get the job because you're actually good at the job? Absolutely. Do that. Absolutely. And I don't care what you do after 9 to 5. Go ahead and be with whoever you want, wear whatever you want, say whatever you want. Great. Are you good at what you do? Yeah. You get the job. And it should be like that yeah. for everybody. Like that. And you know what? I'm not even to go against the LBGTQ or whatever, but my thing is like I I understand that every you know, like they're like, Well, we're not getting this and we're not getting no one's speaking up for us. I'm like, Well, join the club. Women are not getting spoke up for, children are not but it, that doesn't mean that you get favoritism or and I'm not saying that you guys are getting favoritism, but the way that you're speaking is like well, we, it's, it's just not as, it's like you guys are not feeling the attention is being put on your issues like it is. And I'm like, but nobody's really heard them. Like, to be honest, when I see LBGTQ stuff, it's the same stuff. It's, it's the same stuff. Even how they're portrayed. I'm like, you should be upset how you're portrayed on TV. Right. They make it seem like everybody that's LBGT just can't go to work without trying to suck a cock. It's like, right. It. <laughs> but it's like, that's how they make it. And it's like, so is your whole existence as a person just sexual? about sexual? That's what it be saying. I'm like, because I look at stuff and I'm like, that has nothing to do with social, that, with inequality or rights. That has right. to do with what well, this guy has a ball. Just like, what the? So you want to be able to be free to be able to be sexual and all that. That's what it sounds like sometimes. Because I'd be like, well, what does that mean? And that's if not our business. That's not our, Yeah, it's not our business. But it's like you're making it our business and then get mad if we judge it. It's like I never right. even asked I you wouldn't about even know. it. I wouldn't even know. You brought it up and you're like, well, I have the right to be who I am. Yes, <laughs> just not in my face. You don't, you don't have the right to come to me and make me like who you are. Like, you can be whoever you are. Just like I don't have the right to. If I was to come up to you and be like, yo, you need to, whenever you see a black person, you need to bow down because we've been going through it. <laughs> really? <laughs> really? I'd have knocked the mic out. Really? <laughs> really? So we need to bow down. See, that's what I'm talking about. It's like, ain't no bowing. That's the problem. No bowing down. No group is bigger or better than no group. If we all have our issues and our problems, I think we need to work within our group. Look, if you see something going on and people are not respecting the LBGT community, go within the LBGT community and build. You can't get a whole bunch of people that don't know who you are in the first place to understand you. And and then you're like, oh, well, since everybody's jumping on the Black Lives Matter thing, it's like, well, no. 
Oh, right, let us have a let moment. Let us have a moment. Like, damn, we just my got God. to it. Oh, my God. We didn't know. We, oh, your guys didn't say anything about all us. You oh, didn't say on. anything. You got, Why did it take George Floyd to get killed for you to have to speak up for um, LBGT community? You should have been doing it. should have been doing it. You should have been. There, was no, there is nobody. Even if, and if there are people being attacked and murdered in the LBGT. Post Tell it. Us. Post it. Yeah, let us know. But don't get mad when we say, you guys are being insensitive. Oh, shut the fuck up. Right. Yeah. We're not insensitive. We're not insensitive. Just, we had to watch someone put a knee on somebody's neck. neck a human being exactly. to another human being. Yeah. And it had it been anybody, it don't matter. George Ford could have been gay. It doesn't matter. But we didn't know. We Nobody just saw knew. a human being being attacked and being and, and killed. And that's what it was. I don't care if you if, if it was a gay dude down there and he had on purple hair and I would still be like, get your fucking feet off right. his neck. Period. I don't care if he, his tooth his butt showing. Like, I don't care. But I'm saying don't you can't, you have no we no we don't have the right to tell people that they're not in pain, that they're not ha- that they're not hurt. We don't know until you're like I, I can't tell an LBGTQ person that what it's like what it, I, I can't say what it's like to be in their shoes but you can't tell me what it's like to be in a black man's shoes either or right. or even if you understand with a black man you don't know like because i always tell people that i'm like you know if you're in the lbgt community not going against it but it <laughs> might be hard for you to understand what a man that has never dealt with gay people what, what his thought process is and he might do a it. lot of stuff to you that's offensive that he just don't know and might be afraid yeah for just, the other unknown like with me, like even when this thing happened, you know the first thing I said when all this Black Lives Matter stuff started What did happening? you say? The first thing I said was, man, I feel bad for my white friends. Because I have some awesome white friends. You're wonderful. Huh? I have some awesome Mexican friends. I have some awesome everything. So I felt bad because I know they were thinking, like, how am I going to talk to him? Like, I don't want to. And I, and I did. I had, I had to really talk to my friends and be like, yo, what we have is ours. Don't put what we have. You want to talk, talk to me exactly how it was. You're not a part of that. We had something great going on before that shit popped off. So don't, you don't have to, there is nothing for you to say. There, I, it would be wrong for me to expect you to know how to say something. After that, you haven't been witnessing that. You haven't been seeing that. So there's no, I, black people need to stop doing that too. Black people need to stop it too. Stop holding people to these standards that your ass won't even live up to. Stop telling people what they should say and how they should say it when you don't know what we should say. Nobody knows. This shit just happened. We're learning. It just it. happened. It just happened. We're all learning. So stop trying to point a figure. You why you ain't did this because some bitch why you ain't did it. It's a whole lot of black people that I'm wondering why the hell you ain't doing nothing. And that comes. There's a lot of black people. Oh boy. There's a lot of black people. <laughs> there's a lot of black people that I'm wondering why aren't you doing anything. <laughs> They said they posted. Posted what? A black page. Oh, Postmates. I'm really glad that you said it the way you just said it because, you know, I actually say it, Mike. become that now. I'm calling my black friends and I'm like, uh, How you doing? How you yeah. Doing, they're, they're, they're not calling yeah. me. They're not you're calling all, me. You all right? Yeah. Um, hey, listen, uh, we, we cool, right? <laughs> and he's right. <laughs> <laughs> These are friends that are oh, real really? heartfelt oh, friends. You go yes, to their weddings, yeah. you know about their kids, everything. They get the keys to your house. Oh, yeah. yeah. And you start going, picking uh, up dead people. We're yep. cool. We're cool. <laughs> yeah. My one friend, Jeremy Gray, first guy to give me a part in a movie. And he's one of my dearest friends, black director. Wow. And I called him up. I'm like, hey, uh, Jeremy, how you doing? He goes, stop talking like that, that Marino. <laughs> That's what we know how to say is how you doing. You know, we can't say that anymore. I was told. What are you talking about? That's what I said. Somebody says, well, you can't say that. Because Wendy's, is, I, you can't say that. I said, how you doing? I said, well, she's from Jersey. They said, what are we yeah, supposed to say? How are you? No, it's her moniker. We can't say how you doing anymore. She mm-hmm. says, how you doing? Ooh, see, all these rules that. and shit. Let me tell you. Oh, I never heard of that rule. Twat. We started it. Jersey started it, period, end of story. She can't own it. Oh, well, I don't, I don't really even know what you're talking about. But we were talking know. about when your friend called and said, how you doing? That's why I got thrown off because you can't say that anymore. Where's Wendy Williams during this time that we mentioned it? Who is that? Oh. <laughs> well. <laughs> I'll just play. I know <laughs> Wendy. Wendy Williams, I mean, where is she? she, she I haven't she, heard her. You weren't going to hear because... I want to hear like she went off on Whitney. I want to hear that. That's not... Okay, so you know what it is. It's not that. It's the thing. We all know this industry has... (laughs) 
people who are not to you know suppose I don't want to get too deep in it, but handlers. You say it, yes. Handlers is the easiest way to say it, and we have people that are here that are here to handle certain situations. Like, oh, you say this and this and this. And it's like, mm. Wendy, I already know she wasn't gonna be here because this isn't her, her arena, you know. So there's a lot of people that this isn't their arena, which, but I'm glad to see it. It's just that a lot of people aren't, you know, they're not taking you know notice of it, but. It's a lot of people that are like I like to say bought and sold. And sold. Yeah. You know, and, and that's what I feel like when I'm so glad that I, I heard you say what you said because I don't want to treat my friends differently. And we had a good thing. Yeah. We had that a good wasn't thing. broke. Don't I wasn't it. afraid to call anybody now. Yeah. I'm like, eh, and, and, they're they're not me. and you should still reach out. Y'all should still reach out and even if they're not and tell them like, hey, if you feel in a certain way, it's like don't because you know, this is that. And explain. Sometimes it just takes an explanation. But there's my friends at Beverly Hills are so angry. They're like, you yeah. don't understand. They're coming on our streets. And I'm like, why are you mad at me? Yeah. I, why, why are you telling me this? Because they're racist. That's what it means. Well, yeah, there are some people like that. You that know, just I work for the biggest racist in yeah. the world. I work for racists. They ruin everything, man. They, they really do. They really do. Because you really feel like saying, hey, look, I don't even know what it's like to be with you people. Okay? Yeah. Hey, people, hey, you know, here, here's, listen, you people, we can't say you people anymore. Say it. Well, them. Them. The, the, yeah, the, them. DeAndre. The, the, the <laughs> privileged people, whatever it is. But I was one. in uh, on the Target, and I'm in line. I got my mask on. I got my groceries. And some older lady, let's say senior citizen, was, I would say, Latina. And she was with her kid. She looked like maybe she might have been pushing 80 years old. So I just went, go ahead. In front of me. And there was a white dude right behind me, and he just looked at me as if to say, Why? Because now we got to wait and we got to wait longer. And he gave me that look as if to say, You did that because she's Latina. And I looked at this guy, I go, She's a senior citizen. That's why. Oh. Nice and loud. Oh, you got blocked. Nice and loud. Michael's obnoxious when he, he's the nicest guy, but don't screw up his show. Well, you want to see Italian? I mean, I mean, come on. It's an older lady. I know. Who cares? Really? Who cares? You can't get it. It's an older lady. She could barely stand up. She's holding on to the thing. She probably had a grandkid. Live it alone. Yeah. Everybody should do that. I think people, you think people are being nicer? I think so now. I say thank you they're more. I'm hoping to. so. Yeah, people are. People even here, they're trying. They are. People are being, even cooking your food, they're they're taking time. And it's been bad. I'll say that. The Listen, you're right. It's been a. Food has been, I yeah, mean, you know, we had this discussion. Yeah, it's like it has changed. Like I yeah. tell people, COVID has been a blessing, I believe. I believe it's been a blessing because it made people reconnect to who they are and not these things that they think that they need to become in this world right now. And it's like you're trying to become something that's not even real. So what does that make you? Wow. That's a quote from Andre Merida, right? <laughs> Great. And very nicely put. I'd like to know where you're performing next, Michael. Well, <laughs> I finally got a gig. I'm leaving for Florida on Wednesday of next week. I'll be at the Off the Hook Comedy Club in Naples. They're going to do social distancing, but I get to say I sold out every show. <laughs> hey. hey! Hey! Give it up! <laughs> Instead of saying 300 seats, there's only 100. So <laughs> I sold out. <laughs> I sold out. I sold, sold, out. Out. sold out. Sold out. Sold out. Sold out. We're sold out. So we're going to make America great again, and you should have Andre make a song. You guys can rap together. It'll be like <laughs> Dre and Marino. I would yeah, love Marino. that, you know, because we are, um, I'm hoping that, uh, I created a web series called Make America Italian Again. <laughs> so you got to smile right off the title. And we were having a lot of fun, and it was supposedly a spoof on The Sopranos. Mm. And we were going to run for president. And if we got into the White House, you know, the first thing we were going to do is, uh, you know, Paint it because we didn't like the colors. We and, said we that could, earlier. and just stupid, silly <laughs> things that would make you laugh. I'm, I moved my mother in and because mm, so we yeah. want to eat good. We'll <laughs> yeah, probably just though. live in the basement, not because we're afraid, but that's where we ate our whole lives. <laughs> and just silly stuff like this. Mm. And, um, you know, it's funny is, uh, we, we started getting celebrities who were like, you know, hey, I'd like to be in that. I'd like to be in that because oh, it's silly. It makes dope. people yep. smile and it's open to anybody. We got a Robert De Niro lookalike in it, and everybody thought I got Robert De Niro to do a scene. I'm like, he's so much younger. Why would you think that's really him? But <laughs> it's a, just a joke. And uh, 
we were having fun. So now we're going to shoot it as a pilot. We did 18 episodes. Now we're going to do a pilot pilot. And we all looking at each other like, okay, can we still say this? It's Do we have to change something? Do we have to say something different? Uh, does the cast have to be different? Yeah. But if we start doing changing, it might not be as funny, funny. as it was. The You're whole so reason right. why this was funny is because we would Start, never get different. into the White House. We would never get into the White House. It doesn't matter. Y'all can get in there now. I know where well, now it could be even funnier if we say, listen, oh if he could do God. it, we could do it. Could, exactly. <laughs> there you go. There's the joke. We could do it. That's the real, yeah. If he could do it, we, we could, could do, do it. it. And you got painters to change that color. That's That's the... One of the first jokes I did, I says, once we move into the wine house, we're just going to relocate to Jersey because I don't <laughs> like the cold weather. <laughs> See, nothing makes any sense. It's just silly. It's retarded. I love it. I talk the, about Jersey all the time. And they, I they'll sound ask crazy. us questions. Hey, you took care of that ISIS. What happened? Oh, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. We were talking to him. We went dancing, and then that, but we're going to be good. <laughs> <laughs> that ISIS. So nobody got the ice. Nobody got. Yeah, whatever happened, to ISIS. Nobody even talks about them anymore. That is not they got thing. COVID. Yeah, probably. They probably brought it here. Who knows? Yeah. But I know that this was really a great talk. I mean, this was really. We were able to get Andre again. Andre, I'm so glad you met Marino finally. Yes, I'm, glad I'm, that, I'm very happy. Because you're up on the wall, him. Marino, but you've never been here since then. And me and Mike did a show here. Uh, like, phew. And can I say this too for you? I think this is for Cinda and Mike is that going for it. Man, don't care about what they're going to say. If that shit funny, say it. Say that shit. Yeah. Say, if you get in trouble, we'll figure it out. But say it because you know what? That's, that's what this is about now. It's about the truth. It's about, because let me tell you, if you say it, people will, they're going to love you for it. Because they're going to be like, they have balls. Like Marino and Cinder had balls to tell us what everybody else was scared to say it. You know, it's like, if, you, if, they, if they hate you for being real, fuck them. Well, you know what it is about stand-up, too? And you said it, the truth is always funny. Uh, when always. we when we make always. stuff up, nobody laughs. Nobody laughs. Well, you tell the truth. That, it's funny. It's funny because everybody be like, well, you they know relate. what? From dating, divorce, mm -hmm. kissing somebody, shopping, anything that's real. Your father's will be funny. made up zoop thing. What did he do? He made you a slide. Slip and slide. Slip and slide. Yeah. Except he used pearl shampoo. Well, my mother said, look, if they're going to get dirty, I'll clean them. Put the shampoo in the water, Yo. and when they slide down the thing, they get clean. I, get, Yo, I killed two birds it. with one stone. <laughs> Tell them to do it on the on the grass, though. They keep doing it on the concrete, and they're skinning their knees. <laughs> and when he falls, what did he tell you when you fell, Mike? Huh? When, you, when you fell and skinned your knees, but your dad said, come on, get up, try again. Do it again. <laughs> oh, my <laughs> God. Hilarious. But do you can hear so much more of Mike Marino at uh, Mike D Marino, what's your website? Mike Marino dot net. Ma you, Mike Marino dot net. Are you on um, IG or anything too? Social, yeah. What's your social? At Mike Marino Live. All my uh, social media is at Mike Marino Live. My YouTube channel is doing really good. Started making a few bucks here and there. Yeah. Really? Not, not big top. bucks, but some yeah. something. Yeah. And uh, we we'll put some jokes there. <laughs> I do all my characters now on the show. I uh, do a thing called my fake news family, and I do all the news. I do my uncle Tommy. Why don't you like, do the show? Huh? Well, y'all should do that. Like sketch comedy is huge. Right we now. did only yeah. one. Steve's, we were is, so why good. You, why don't you pick that back up and do it? Like, we could. We could we do could some do stuff. We're going to do, a lot do of it. Stuff. We have a good we're chemistry do together. Yeah, I'm. Sunda plays it. my sin, my sister in a pilot we did called Reconstructing Jersey, oh, which wow. was about our lives, just trying to make ends meet yeah. in a, a small town in New Jersey. And the reason why <laughs> I was doing what I was doing is because the four lead comedians can actually do stand up. So when we were done filming the pilot on that Saturday night, we went and did a concert. And that's the way we were, you know, making money on the show and then mm -hmm. making money on a live performance. Yeah. And see, and now you, that's what I was going to, I'm glad we brought that up because the reason why I was telling that you guys should do it is like we're in an age of, and, and Caesar can pretty much attest to it too, is that it's content, content, content. It's never enough. So like if you get, some really good content and we get enough of good content there's so many ways besides that that we can like service it and yep. make money there's so many because th with me it's just the audio pretty much but with that it's like the audio the video everything works together and so each thing is a separate entity like it's just the audio version of it's just the video version of it, both versions. you know what i'm saying and so there's so many ways that you can use it like putting it on the youtube and and creating there's it's 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 endless well, the possibilities are endless now that you guys have met because maybe he can make the theme song 
and it's going to be written by a real moon. You'll tell him. <laughs> I when love I tell that. you, when I do the Guinea shows, right, I got to be careful. He's, I said, I don't think I can say it anymore. Say but it. see, I think it's funny. Because say, I do them. Say it. I do say the Guinea it. shows because I was raised Italian with a That's black dope. mother. Make any sense? It's so crazy. Uh, what, was, what was her name that used to come on? She had the Tracy Ohm. Oh, yes. Oh, Jesus. I, what, what a happened? talented That's what woman. That's what I'm saying. And we need that. It, without her... We wouldn't know who the Simpsons were. Yeah. See? She See? was And brilliant. look, the Simpsons are still here, and she ain't. But it just goes to show you how it's checks and balances. You got to really, it's checks and balances. Well, we should bring it back. Why don't you, let, let's do something like Tracy that. Maybe we will, maybe the next time you come back, we'll be doing sketches, we'll be doing something, but yeah. I can assure you that Mike Marino, Mike Marino will be working. Will be working with us. Let's go to work. Let's work. All right. We're going to work. You know where to find us. Sunda Live. We got Andre underscore Merritt, M-E-R-R-I-T-T, and Mike Marino Live. You saw us. It's real. We're gone. This talk show's on the go in 